right now. Pure chaos in Dallas as people run for their lives as their shots rang out at the Texas Fair last night. One of our executive producers was actually there when it happened. We'll hear what it felt like firsthand during those shocking moments. And back here at home, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, we are starting off at 64 degrees. Hope everyone's eclipse experience was great yesterday. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. 6 o'clock this Sunday. It is October 15th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good so, morning. How was your eclipse? It was wonderful. Yeah, what did you guys do? I like that you did this. Wonderful. Imagination. Um, I was just gardening outside mm -hmm. with my dogs. One of my dogs did not want to come outside. What? Yeah, sister was in the doorway like, mm-mm. What I don't know what's happening. So do you think she okay. realized that like something was up? I don't know, but I need to talk to San Antonio Zoo because I know yeah. they were they were watching their animals to see how yeah. they reacted. But it was beautiful, Sarah. I mean, it was like down to the minute when those clouds. Yeah, just the sun came away. out right in San Antonio at the right moment. There were still some folks who didn't really get to see it, at like near Pleasanton where it was still cloudy. But the vast majority of us were able to see the eclipse, and it was a beautiful sight. Speaking of clouds, we do have some clouds around San Antonio this morning. Right now, it's mostly cloudy and 64 degrees in San Antonio, but where there's been clearer skies, like up near Comfort, it's 54. 57 in Bulverde, where there's been clearer skies as well, and 60 in Canyon Lake. Today's going to be a beautiful day, but a little breezy. We're going to see winds from the north at 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. But skies will be clearing by the afternoon. It's going to be nice and sunny outside and a high of only 77. If you think these temperatures are nice, wait until you see tomorrow morning's lows around San Antonio. I'll have the details ahead as to what is going to be a beautiful weather week in just a few minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Take a look at your screen. This is video from the Texas State Fair shooting taken by KSAT executive producer Emily Allen, who was there and heard those gunshots. She and her family had to take shelter, she says, for about 30 minutes. They are okay. Emily told us shots were fired near one of the fair's food courts and everyone inside ran for their lives. I heard, I, now I know it was gunshots. I didn't really know what it was. And everyone was screaming and running. These two little girls were standing there crying. Of course, they have no idea what's happening. And we just kind of grabbed them. We asked them, you know, where their parents were. They didn't know. And we were just holding their hands and my mom was praying. And um, finally they said we could come out once everyone was allowed to leave, Emily said everyone calmly walked out to the parking lot. Meanwhile, Dallas police say one person is in custody. Three people were shot. Those three are currently in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. They said while they check bags and have visitors walk through weapon detecting system, licensed weapons are allowed on fairgrounds. It's unclear if the fair will be open today. Now to the latest in the Middle East. Just three minutes ago, rocket sirens going off in Tel Aviv and central Israel. This happening more than a week since Hamas terrorist attacks where more than a thousand men, women and children were murdered. Well, Israel's defense minister says the country's military will attack Gaza City, quote unquote, very soon. Officials in Israel are urging those in Gaza to leave and move, but time may be running out. So the Palestinian Health Ministry also saying that they are seeing casualties of war as Israel searches for Hamas and tries to take the fight to the terrorists. ABC's Alison Kosick with updates including information on those trapped Americans. A ground offense expected to begin in Gaza as Israel Defense Forces reported they're preparing for coordinated attacks from the air, sea and land. Israel vowing to stop Hamas more than a week after the terror group launched a horrific attack in Israel that has killed thousands of people. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visiting Israeli soldiers outside the Gaza Strip Saturday, asking if they're ready for the next stage. And the aim of our operation is to dismantle Hamas and its military capabilities to make sure that Hamas will never again have the ability to kill or abduct or threaten Israeli civilians. Israeli Defense Forces telling ABC News more than 400,000 people have evacuated Gaza to the south. Israel warning civilians to leave. We will do our best not to strike civilians. They are not our enemy. 
President Biden spoke again Saturday with Prime Minister Netanyahu reaffirming U.S. support of Israel. And for the first time since the Hamas terror attack, Biden also spoke on Saturday with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. The White House saying the two discussed efforts to bring humanitarian assistance to Palestinians, particularly those in Gaza. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza, innocent. Palestinian families and the vast majority have nothing to do with Hamas. They're being used as human shields. A senior U.S. official tells ABC News the USS Eisenhower carrier strike group is now headed to the eastern Mediterranean, joining the USS Gerald Ford that arrived there earlier this week. Officials say both carrier strike groups are intended to act as a deterrent for Iran and Hezbollah not to get involved in the Israel-Hamas war. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Well, Chicago city leaders saying more help is needed to shelter the busloads of migrants now arriving from Texas. Overall, there are more than 3,000 new arrivals living at police stations throughout Chicago, and city officials there saying Governor Greg Abbott has dramatically increased the number of buses he's sending from the U.S.-Mexico border. He plans on sending 20 to 25 buses uh, a day. Just in this past week, we had 63 buses. In the meantime, the city of Chicago opening up a new shelter every six days to prepare for this arrival. Well, she says it's still not enough as Governor Greg Abbott's buses, they're not slowing down and more help is needed across their city. And Governor Greg Abbott says he will not allow the Texas legislature to raise teachers' salaries until school vouchers are passed. This also includes restricting funding for schools across the state. House Speaker Dade Phelan said earlier this week that he is negotiating to find enough votes for a voucher bill, but he can't do so unless it was tied to teacher pay raises and increased public school funding. In response, Governor Abbott says he'll add the teacher pay to the special session then if vouchers pass. But he says if vouchers do not pass, he will call another special session, and if they don't pass then, He'll support primary challengers against holdout Republicans. And an East Texas teacher reported to have resigned after giving students melatonin gummies. ABC releasing a report saying a kindergarten teacher at Pine Forest Elementary in the Humble Independent School District gave a special education student melatonin gummies. A mother of a five-year-old nonverbal child says that on three separate occasions, her son came home completely lethargic, stumbling to get off the bus. Mother said the teacher had called her for advice on how to get her son to calm down, asked her if he likes gummies, but the mother didn't realize the teacher was talking about melatonin gummies. Humble ISD sending a statement to ABC saying that the district has launched a formal investigation confirming that the teacher did in fact give out melatonin to students on her own without parental permission. The district added that the teacher did not notify campus administration or the nurse. The teacher has not been named and the investigation is ongoing. Time now, 6.08, 64 degrees. We made reservations early for part of the summer. I want to make sure we get to see it. <laughs> that was my favorite interview from yesterday, definitely. Okay, so we had so much fun here on GMSA yesterday with all our Eclipse coverage. Hey, our meteorologist, meteorology team knocked it out of the park. We'll chat with Sarah Spivey after the break and she's gonna give us all the recap. Morning and welcome back. Taking a live look out of the Alamo City. We are starting off at 64 degrees. Gotta say, yesterday was pretty cool out there. Looking at the eclipse. Had my glasses on. I was prepared. Ready to go, Matt. Yeah. What about you guys? Glasses on. Glasses. Ready to go. Yep. I loved seeing everyone out in the neighborhood, looking up. <laughs> It was really cute. It was, it was awesome. Unifying yeah. That everybody was out there looking at, at the sky. You know, I was here and we got to go out to the KSAC garden. And the coolest thing, of, other than those shadows that I loved to see, was that it got dim like it was dusk and the station lights actually automatically turned on, which was pretty cool. And they turn off when... Yeah, when, when yeah. the sun returned to its normal state. Very cool. Yeah, hey, I want to show you this picture sent in through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app, the different phases of the annular eclipse. Thank you to KSAC user, uh, Connect user Steve for sending that in. Absolutely cool to see that all in one picture there. 
Now, today the weather setup is interesting because we've got this high pressure system over the Rockies that's going to be directing our air in from the north. So we are actually going to be seeing cooler and drier air filtering in from the north throughout the day. It's going to reinforce the nice weather we've been seeing, but it is going to make things a bit windy. And today we're going to see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour practically throughout the day. So if you have any backyard barbecues planned, things like that, maybe you're going out and about. We've got a lot of visitors in town from the annual eclipse yesterday. Just know that it's going to be pretty windy all day long, uh, so keep that in mind. Now outside right now, 64 degrees. We do have clouds in San Antonio, mostly cloudy skies at the moment. Winds from the north northeast at 13 miles per hour, so we're already starting with that breeze. And look at that humidity. Dew points are low, 35% humidity, 36 degree dew point. It feels amazing outside. It would be a great hair day if it wasn't for the windy conditions outside. Take a look at clouds and temperatures. Again, we've got some mid-level clouds out there from San Antonio to Del Rio, where it's 71 degrees in Del Rio, 58 in Kerrville, 64 in Hondo, 68 in Catula, where there's clearer skies, temperatures are a few degrees cooler, like in Pleasanton, where it's 58 as well. But again, with the dry air in place and drier air even still moving in from the north, it is going to feel amazing and skies will quickly clear after sunrise. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. By 10, we're going to be partly cloudy. Skies will be clearing. We'll be about 65 degrees at 10. And again, winds are going to be from the northeast at 13 miles per hour at 10. At noon, 70 winds from the north northeast at 15 miles per hour, so a breezy day all day long, and then sunny skies in the afternoon and a high right near 77. Later on tonight after sunset, winds will calm slightly, but it's still going to be pretty breezy. All in all, a very lovely day. Here's a look at forecast highs for the day. Our average high in San Antonio is 83, so we're going to be about uh, five to six degrees cooler than that in San Antonio, 77. It will be 83 in Del Rio, 73 in Rock Springs, 73 in Kerrville, 81 in Catula, 79 in Beeville, 75 in Gonzales, 77 in New Braunfels and Seguin, 73 in Bernie and Bulverde, as well as in Holotus. It'll be 79 in Pleasanton, 78 in Floresville, and 78 in Bandera. All right, I mentioned that the morning lows are going to be nice and chilly over the coming days. Take a look at this. Tomorrow morning, 50 degrees. Tuesday morning, a lot of us could be waking up in the 40s for the first time since April. It's one of those, it's that time of year where if you leave early in the morning, you kind of have to turn on the heater of your car and then by the afternoon, you have to turn it back to the air conditioning. We're going to be seeing morning lows a bit more closer to seasonally average by Thursday through the weekend. So take a look at your forecast over the next several days. Very, very comfortable through Wednesday with cool mornings, comfortable afternoons. By Thursday, a warmer air mass starts to move in. And so by the weekend, next weekend, our highs are going to be closer to 90 degrees with more morning lows in the 60s rather than in the 50s. But guys, again, after this last summer, <laughs> even 88, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with 88 or even 90 degrees right. at this point. My husband and I are going to Utopia next week, and he's like, oh, is it going to be nice and cool? It's like, it's going to probably be a little warmer. Yeah, he's well, like, what yeah, do you mean by, by that? And I was like, high 80s. And he was, we were like, oh, that's fine. That's yeah. nice and cool. We can yeah. handle that. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. 616, 64 degrees. All right, we are talking candy. What is your favorite candy? Um, okay, no, Reese's or Skittles? Uh, but now that I know all the chemicals are in Skittles, I don't know. All right, we'll get this. Americans will spend almost $4 billion on candy alone this Halloween. Eminem wants to make sure you don't run out with a new delivery service. And the weather is cooling down. That means it's time for bonfires, but experts want to make sure you do it safely. We'll fire away some tips for you. That's after the break. All right, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Think about how much candy you can have when you win the lottery. Pick five. all of it. <laughs> five, zero, zero, fireball five, daily four, nine, four, one, nine, fireball six. Cash five, nine, 11, 12, 20, 21, Texas lotto two, 14, 30, 35, 47, 54, and Powerball 14, 16, 42, 48, 64, power, Powerball 14, power play two. Morning and welcome back. While National Fire Prevention Week was last week, experts want to make sure that you are safe and secure around the fire any week of the year. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither tells us how to properly use and store fuel containers if you're already planning your Cowboys cookout for tomorrow. 
from burning fall leaves to fire pits and barbecues. There are a lot of blazes this time of year, but flames and fuel don't mix. There's thousands of people that are treated in hospital emergency rooms every year from burns and other injuries associated with fires um, that were related to fuel containers. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says properly storing, using, and handling fuel and gas cans or containers are all critical parts of fire safety. You never want to put gasoline on a fire or an open flame. You want to use only appropriate um, approved materials for starting or relighting fires. That means a fire starter log or stick. Other things to have on hand, a fire extinguisher, water container, or hose nearby in case the fire gets out of hand. You also want to make sure that you check the weather beforehand. Make sure that there's not high winds or gusts. And also check to see that there aren't any um, uh, warnings of risk of wildfires in your area. Gas cans or fuel containers should be stored outside of a home in a cool and well-ventilated area and never store or handle a fuel container near a heat source or flame. The vapors itself can, can catch fire and flash back and explode, or they can flash forward violently and burn people nearby. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, there you go. I liked how we introed it with, uh, if you're ready for the Cowboys cookout tomorrow. Ready. Yeah, let's Monday. go. Just taking off work and make a brisket. <laughs> Time now, 622, 64 degrees. Well, binge watching Netflix for eight hours straight isn't enough. It's a lot. It's a lot. We'll tell you about a new immersive experience Netflix is offering. Morning and welcome back. In your morning consumer news, Google will now let you create AI images directly from its search bar. So users can type in a description and get several generated images to choose from within minutes. They can then refine and even download the images. Check that out. Yeah. And YouTube is beating Netflix, a new survey says. For the first time, American teens are watching more on YouTube than on Netflix. Analysts say the poll shows YouTube's content is improving and the streaming business is getting more competitive. And if you want to try your luck on a Squid Games obstacle course or want to attend the Queen's Ball in Bridgerton, listen up. Netflix, this is actually really cool, opening up homes that will allow fans to fully immerse themselves in their favorite Netflix shows. They're going to be called Netflix Houses. They're going to rotate installations. Fans will also be able to, this is my favorite part, eat foods from their favorite shows. Very cool. M&M's parent company Mars is teaming mm. up with the delivery service GoPuff starting at 2 p.m. on Halloween. If you run out of candy for trick-or-treaters, M&M's has you covered with a new promotion. It's called Halloween Rescue Squad. This is cute. A service that promises to deliver free Mars candy to your neighborhood in under an hour. Okay, so this is like an M&M emergency? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've been there where it's like I only got like a small bag of mm. candy. So I'm like, oh, I'm not going to have trick or treaters. And then like they keep coming I'm like, oh, no, I'm like, sorry, you can only have one. I don't want to be that person, but I'm running out. So when we have M&M emergencies, I know that it, it's you who called them. Yeah. We're going to knock on the case out door. <laughs> like Ghostbusters, right? Yeah, that's fair. Time now, 627, 64 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Sunday. It is 630 this morning. It is October 15th. So, hey. 16 days away from Halloween. Have you figured out your costume yet? I don't know. Okay. Did you start decorating? Oh, de decorations have been up for like a couple oh. weeks. Yeah. Yeah, but... Um, start decorating in August. Yeah. You know, just to bring in those cooler temps. And Sarah, they're here. 64 yeah. degrees. Feels great outside with low humidity. But again, yesterday really was a treat, wasn't it? The annular solar eclipse. This picture is sent in to us on our KSAT Connect feature of our weather app. So now that the annular eclipse is done. We are counting down to the total solar eclipse Monday, April 8th at around 1.30. 176 days away. The moon this time will completely block the sun, meaning it will get totally dark outside for those along the path of totality from Eagle Pass all the way up toward Dallas and Texarkana. That includes areas in the Hill Country, Kerrville, Comfort, Bandera, Bernie, Canyon Lake, Lakey, Rock Springs, Hondo, Uvalde, and around San Antonio. You won't be in the path 
the totality everywhere. You really have to get onto the northwest side or west side of town from SeaWorld to the Rim to Castroville up toward Fair Oaks Ranch and uh, toward Bulverde as well. That's where the path of totality will be, but a partial eclipse visible everywhere else. And then remember, we are your authority station. So your Eclipse Authority station, so we're going to keep you updated there. As for the weather today, 65 at 10, some clouds out there right now, but skies will be clearing 77. It's going to be windy today. Winds from the north gusting up to about 30 miles per hour all day long. That will, however, set up beautiful weather for the week ahead. I'll have those details in a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we now know one person is dead after a drive-by shooting on the city's east side. As we know right now, it happened a little after one this morning. This is Candlewick Court near Wagner High School. A BCSO on the scene telling us one person was shot and killed by that drive-by shooting. They're still searching for suspects. At last check, no one in custody. We do expect more information, and we hope to have that by 8 a.m. So stay with us on air and online. A San Antonio man is waking up behind bars after admitting to police that he killed somebody. Police were called to a West Side neighborhood last Friday night on reports of a suspicious person looking through cars. Officers eventually found 35 year old Bradley Dimmick matching the description people gave when they called 911 while attempting to identify him. Police say Dimmick just plainly admitted to killing a man and a dog inside a home on San Lucas Street earlier that night. Police went to that house on San Lucas and found a 65 year old Keith Dimmick dead along with his dog. Investigators haven't clarified if the two are related or what led up to this murder, but Dimmick is facing two charges, murder and cruelty to, non to non livestock. Well, new San Antonio police body camera footage has been released and it shows a suspect being shot and killed as he was trying to run away. So we initially told you about this incident back on September 16th. It happened in the 3100 block of Roosevelt Avenue. Police were called several times about an armed man, 46 year old Jesus Hernandez, who was stealing items from a Mexican restaurant storage facility. A witness is telling police that Hernandez had a gun and a machete, but after sweeping the crime scene, police did not find any firearms. Uh, police say Hernandez did have backpacks from some of the employees at the restaurant, and when those employees confronted him, they say that he swung at them with the machete. Hernandez ignored police officers' commands to drop the weapon and was then shot in the back. Uh, Three-year veteran officer Joshua Bagley pulling the trigger at last check, still on administrative duty as the investigation into the shooting continues. Well, there are questions about whether there were any missed warning signs before the Hamas attack on Israel. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks tells us that the White House still trying to figure out the situation. This morning, serious questions about whether U.S. intelligence was picking up on any clues about increased threats from Hamas in the lead up to its unprecedented attack on Israel. The New York Times reporting that two CIA briefs mentioned a possible escalation in rocket fire from Gaza, but also reportedly had no details about the sheer scale and specifics of the terror attack. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who's traveling in Israel, was asked what the U.S. knew before the New York Times headline broke. If we had known or if we know of a pending attack against uh, an ally, we would clearly inform that ally. The news coming after President Biden spent over an hour on an emotional phone call talking to the families of those Americans still missing and feared held hostage by Hamas. I assured them my personal commitment to do everything possible, everything possible to return every missing American to their families. The president also saying it is a priority to address the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza, with food, water and electricity cut off and Israel's overwhelming retaliatory airstrikes. You know, we have to we can't lose sight of the fact that the overwhelming majority of Palestinians had nothing to do with Hamas. And that was ABC's Mary Alice Parks reporting. The House Republicans have picked Congressman Jim Jordan out of Ohio as their new speaker nominee. We say nominee because it is not a done deal yet. Now, Republicans are picking up the pieces in the House after Kevin McCarthy's historic removal from his position of Speaker of the House. Still unclear, though, if Jordan can win the 217 votes needed in a full House vote as this conference faces another step in the leadership crisis. Already signs that Jordan will see resistance. GOP members voted on whether they're going to support Jordan on the House floor vote, with 152 saying yes, but still 
55 members of the Republican Party in the House saying no. Multiple lawmakers say a floor vote for speaker is set for Tuesday. A sweeping ban on COVID-19 vaccine mandates for employees of private Texas businesses passed the Texas Senate early Friday. The bill offers no exceptions for health facilities, but senators did agree to allow those entities to require unvaccinated employees to wear personal protective gear. The legislation passed on a 19 to 12 vote and is headed to the House, where similar efforts stalled out earlier this year. It now awaits referral to a House committee. A special night here in San Antonio. Hemisphere Park illuminated with colorful lanterns. People gathering to support for blood cancer patients. Now the annual Light the Night Walk, bringing people together, bringing survivors and supporters together, all for a great cause. KSAT's Camelia Juarez sharing us the stories that bring light to the darkness of cancer. Light the Night, San Antonio. Just below Hemisphere. <laughs> Red, yellow, white lanterns sparkled through the crowd. The red lanterns for support, gold for remembrance, and white for survivors, each a symbol of hope and celebration. Remembering how I felt during treatment, how I felt when I was first diagnosed, to now seeing, again, the support, um, the people here who are just walking just because, um, just to be a part of it, that's amazing. Maggie Rodriguez proudly holds a white lantern, sharing a spark of hope. Can do it. If it's possible for me, it's possible for you. It brings her to tears to stand alongside people who can relate to her challenging journey. Thousands of people are carrying their lights to raise money and awareness for blood cancers. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is raising over $800,000 to find a cure and improve the lives of survivors. While well, we call her our queen bee. Chiquina Barrera lost her mother last year, so her family holds the gold lanterns high. But at us seeing so many people come together, not only raising money, but awareness. You're here together in solidarity, and so it's really nice. Kamalia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. All right, we have a double leading essay today, one at 8 and one at 8.30. At 8 a.m., we're going to be joined by Eric Cooper from the San Antonio Food Bank. We'll be talking about a special goal for this coming month. We're going to be talking about Hunger Action Month, everything that was able to be donated and collected. Plus, we are already starting to get ready for the holidays, making sure families in and around our area are prepared. And then at 8.30, we are speaking to Greater SATX, a huge announcement from Friday, a company coming to San Antonio with huge economic implications, possibly 1,500 jobs, billions and billions of dollars for our local economy. So don't miss it, 8 a.m. and 8.30. If you have any questions, you can head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Submit those questions, then join us at 8 and 8.30 a.m. But for now, time is just about 6.40, and it is a beautiful 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, have you started pinning down your holiday travel plans? We'll tell you what travel experts are saying. But. If you're not thinking that far down the line, which I think I actually have to start doing, we're going to tell you about a local nonprofit helping kids with illnesses celebrate Halloween the best day, best way possible. Super cute. You didn't answer the question. Did you figure out your Halloween costume? I don't know if I'm going to dress up. What? Did you dress up last year? Oh, you were ET last year. I was, yeah. That was yeah. fantastic. Aliens, right? Aliens, always. <laughs> don't see any alien lights out there this morning. Just the sparkling city ones. Hey, Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Childhood tradition interrupted by illness. Now, patients are often forced to spend Halloween in a hospital room, but one nonprofit is stepping up, helping out, working to make sure that they can still enjoy spooky time. KSAT's John Paul Barajas explains their efforts and how you can help. I didn't know what it meant like when I started it, but now I know what it means. At four years old, Gilbert Edetta was diagnosed with leukemia. Two years later, he's in remission and got to ring the bell to celebrate the end of treatments last month. We're thankful for the organizations that have been around to help us through it because you just go through the motions and you just put him first. It's groups like the Stay Strong Foundation creating bright spots in dark times. This year, Stay Strong is providing patients with Halloween costumes and bringing a Halloween party to those who can't go trick-or-treating. I'd be staring at them with this big cat head. <laughs> they would laugh. And it, was, it, was really, it was a really cool time. It was very needed in a, in a space like that. For Bryce Fox, dressing up and laughing with other patients like him was more than a morale boost. 
It was a distraction from the tumor in his pelvis. While some may take the festivities for granted, State Strong Board President Debbie Harper says being able to celebrate Halloween goes a long way for those in the hospital, something she learned firsthand from her son. The day before he went into the hospital, he wanted to do something, and so he put it out on Facebook, and he said, hey, you know, we need costumes for these kiddos here because they're kind of isolated. That was three years ago. Since then, Stay Strong has collected Halloween costumes for pediatric patients at University Hospital. This year, their goal bigger than ever, 400 costumes to let kids be kids, even in tough times. October was really fun because everybody looked forward to seeing what he would be dressed up as next. Most of them were superheroes. Most of them were superheroes, yeah. Do you know what you're going to be for Halloween this year? He wants to be James Bond. I think we all want to be James Bond. <laughs> John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Such a great story, John Paul. Okay, the Stay Strong Foundation is collecting donations through October 22nd. You can donate by texting costumes to the number on your screen, which is 53555, or by clicking the link on our website on KSAT.com. All right, 645, 64 degrees, a breath of fresh air. Absolutely. We're in the 60s. Yeah, and temperatures are nice and cool, but the humidity is what's really nice out there. Low humidity. You say breath of fresh air, we're going to get a lot of air from the north in the form of winds. Take a look at the wind forecast, wind gust forecast for the day today. Wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour this morning, up to 25 miles per hour by around lunch. And even in the later afternoon, it's still going to be pretty breezy, although not as breezy. Breezy. Winds will be from the north gusting up to 15 to 20 miles per hour. This evening, winds calm down slightly, but still a bit breezy as well. So the winds are going to be with us all day long. A bit of a nuisance if you have outdoor plans, but all in all, it's actually a good thing that we're getting winds from the north because that's going to set up a beautiful weather pattern for the week ahead. It's a quiet morning across Texas. Uh, not too much out there, just a few clouds around San Antonio. And as we take a wider view, we've got some showers and storms out across uh, the northeast, but really this high pressure system across the Rockies is what is going to be guiding our weather. Now over the summer when we see high pressure system, we worry, oh my goodness, it's going to be so hot. But this is actually sending in cooler air from the north. So take a look at temperatures this morning across the nation. In Colorado, it's 37 degrees. So this is going to send us some cool Rocky Mountain air all the way down to San Antonio. Now we're not going to be getting into the 30s, but mornings may actually dip into the 40s in the coming days. I'll show you that in just a bit, but it is going to be bringing us some dry air as well. Think about how wonderful it feels across the Rockies with that dry air. That's what's going to be sent our way as well today. As we take a look outside though right now, it is fairly cloudy. We've got some clouds out there this morning, but skies will be clearing. There's that low humidity. Feels wonderful outside and it's already breezy with north winds sustained at 15 miles per hour. Where we've had a clear skies, temperatures are quite a bit cooler like in Bulverde where it's 58, it's 59 in Canyon Lake, 59 in Bernie, 61 in Rio Medina, 62 this morning in Converse, 64 in Hondo. Good morning in Las Maples where it's 60 degrees this morning. Take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Temperatures briefly dipping to near 60 degrees just within the next hour or so. And then we'll be seeing a steady warm up as skies clear, but it's going to be windy and pleasant outside. 65 at 10 around noon, 70 degrees. We'll be looking at mostly sunny skies by noon and in the afternoon it's going to be sunny and 75. Still though windy this afternoon with gusts up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. Take Take a look at forecast highs. We're well below the average of 83. It's going to be 73 in Kerrville, 73 in Rock Springs, 83 in Del Rio, 81 in Catula, 75 in Gonzales, 75 in Canyon Lake, 78 Port S.A. area, 77 Seguin in New Braunfels, 78 in Hondo, 78 in Nixon Smiley, and 73 in Comfort. Now again, that nice dry air is going to be with us through most of the week, at least until Wednesday. We're going to have dew points in the 30s and 40s. That's dry and very dry dry air. In fact, the next couple of days you may want to reach for the chapstick. We've got chapstick weather with dry conditions in place through Tuesday. Then by Thursday, humidity does return somewhat. So we are going to have a bit of a warming weather pattern Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Our highs are going to be closer to 90 degrees. But what I want you to do is look at your screen. Take a look at the morning lows tomorrow morning, 50 degrees. Tuesday morning, we're going to probably dip down into the 40s in many places around San Antonio. So it's going to be 
nice and chilly in the morning, but comfortable in the afternoons with highs in the 80 in the upper 70s over the next few days. Guys, thank you, Sarah. Very nice weather. Thank you, Sarah. Time now just about 6:50, 63 degrees. We'll be right back. Right back. Good morning, and welcome back. So, you know, Halloween just a couple weeks away, but if you need help planning your holiday vacation, we're looking way past this. <laughs> Time to look at airfares. Travel experts say the time to get a good deal is running out fast. So ABC's Janae Norman has the details on how much you might be spending. It's not yet Halloween, but this morning experts say now is the time to snag the best deals for holiday travel. If you're planning to fly for Thanksgiving or Christmas this year, this weekend is the best time to book your holiday travel. And this holiday season is anticipated to be a busy one with millions expected to travel. I am going to get home to my son. According to Hopper, fares this holiday season will average $268 per ticket. That's down about 14% from this time last year. So what holiday deals should you grab right now? Well, New York to Orlando, round trip, $138. Seattle to Boston, 228 round trip. And if you're in the mood to head overseas, flights to New Zealand, 686 round trip from multiple cities across the country. Those are fares that you might normally expect to see in January or February, but we're still able to find, even at this late juncture, for some Thanksgiving and Christmas availability. I would not sleep on it. And experts stress the key to a good deal, flexibility. You can save nearly a hundred bucks by flying on less popular dates before and after each holiday week. If you can fly on the less popular days around the holidays, you can save upwards of 40%. So when you fly is just as important as when you book your tickets. That was ABC's Janae Norman. So the San Antonio International Airport officially broke ground this week on a new ground loading facility. It's going to add capacity and ground gates, allowing for the increase of domestic and international flights. The new facility in Terminal A will add three ground gates as the airport continues to grow. The ground loading facility is expected to be completed by 2025. We have the budget breakdown on our website right now. Just head to ksat.com. And we're actually talking about the expansion of the airport and the new direct international travel that they're offering now and going into next year. We're going to talk about that on Leading USA at 830. Very cool. All right, time now, 655, 63 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning to you on this Sunday. Coming up here on GMA, the world watching those latest developments in the Israel-Hamas war. Hundreds of thousands of Gazans search for safety after Israel's stark warning of a ground invasion of Gaza, activists warning of a humanitarian disaster as the death toll rises on both sides. Now eight days since Hamas terrorists first attacked Israel. More on what the White House is saying and the worldwide reaction. We, of course, do have team coverage on the ground. And back here at home, it's the end of an era for one major a retailer saying goodbye to DVDs, why they're discontinuing sales and what this could mean for the future of media and what the market value of collectibles, they could go up. And finally here, Monday night football excitement. We are looking ahead to Cowboys Chargers. That's the matchup. And what's next for our Monday night super fan surprise winner? That is all ahead right here on GMA. All right, a beautiful sunrise out there right now this morning, but we do have some clouds this wow, morning in San gorgeous. Antonio. Yeah, we'll be looking at clearing skies, 70 at noon, 77 only for the high, and it is going to be windy today. Winds are going to be from the north at 15 to 20, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, we wake up at 50 degrees, so don't forget those light jackets early in the morning. You'll shrug them off in the afternoons, though. 77 on Monday, 49 Tuesday morning, and 78 gradual warming Trend. We'll be back in the upper 80s by the weekend, guys. Please don't make me go to the roof for a sunrise pick. Oh, uh, we already it's did it yesterday. Okay, I was like, it's too cold. Row. We it's wasted and it. And it's a little gusty, too. It's windy as yeah. well. The winds do make it feel a little cooler out there. This is very pretty, though. Sarah, thank you so much. Uh -huh. So, we're going to take an hour long break for GMA, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be back here at 8 a.m. We have two special leading essays. We have Food Bank at 8 a.m. We have Greater SATX at 8 30. We're going to be talking about not only Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A busy night in San Antonio. Police responding to two separate shootings overnight. We now know one of them deadly, another one ending with a child injured. What investigators are saying about the details.
Fear and panic broke out last night's Texas State Fair in Dallas after shots rang out. What we're learning this morning as police say one person is in custody. And a busy day for KSAT and really everyone in our viewing area. The eclipse happening. What is going to come next? we got another one in six months. We're going to be checking in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is October 15th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. It, I just want to take a second. It is 62 degrees. It is beautiful. Yeah, I had a fleece on earlier. You the were fleece? in full pajama mode okay. about 12 minutes ago. Sweat it's actually pants. impressive. Sweatpants under the dress, mm -hmm. fleece, because... It's cold. Uh, yeah, it's cold. I'm sorry, I'm South Texas girl, Sarah. <laughs> this is cold for me. We're just not used to these temperatures that much right now, are we? But temperatures are in the low 60s around San Antonio. We have some clouds to start our day and even some locations in the 50s. It's 57 in Bernie, 59 in New Braunfels, 62 in San Antonio, 61 in Hondo, 61 at the Converse area, and 58 in Lost Maple. So again, you can see there's a few clouds out there, uh, but generally a gorgeous start to the day. Those clouds Clouds are going to clear and it's going to be sunny outside right now. You can see the sunshine with a mix of clouds too. As I mentioned, it's 62 in San Antonio, but it's also windy. Winds are from the north at 13 miles per hour. And today we are going to be windy pretty much throughout the day. Even though the weather is going to be beautiful with low humidity and comfortable temperatures, those winds will be from the north at 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. So that's the only thing that's a little bit of a nuisance. Maybe you have a backyard. Uh, grill out or things like that, you're going to be experiencing those winds throughout the day. 65 and partly cloudy at 10, but by noon it's going to be mostly sunny. 70 and sunny in the afternoon, 77 for the high temperature. Coming up in the forecast tomorrow morning, it's going to be pretty cool. I'll show you how cool those morning lows will get in the week ahead in just a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. Take a look at your screen. This is video from the Texas State Fair shooting taken by KSAT executive producer Emily Allen, who was there and heard those gunshots. She and her family had to take shelter for about 30 minutes. They are OK. Emily told the shots were fired near one of the fair's food courts and everyone inside ran for their lives. I heard. I, now I know it was gunshots. I didn't really know what it was. And everyone was screaming and running. These two little girls were standing there crying. Of course, they have no idea what's happening. And we just kind of grabbed them. We asked them, you know, where their parents were. They didn't know. And we were just holding their hands and my mom was praying. And um, finally they said we could come out. Once everyone was allowed to leave, Emily said everyone calmly walked out to the parking lot. Meanwhile, Dallas police say one person is in custody. Three people were shot. Those three are currently in the hospital and they're going to be OK. They have non life threatening injuries. They said while they check bags and have visitors walk through weapon detective systems, licensed weapons, they are allowed on fairgrounds. A press release from the State Fair of Texas says they plan on opening today at 2. Well, back here at home, new this morning, one person dead an by another drive-by on the city's east side. So a BCSO lieutenant on the scene telling us this happened just after 1 this morning. This is on Chadwick. It's near Wagner High School. Now, one person shot and killed by the drive-by shooting. At last check, still no suspect in custody. No suspect information at last check. Now, we are expected to hear updates from investigators through the morning, so stay with us on air and online. And new this morning, a child was grazed by a bullet after a drive-by shooting on the city's west side. San Antonio police say the shooting happened just before 1030 last night at a home on Lebrano Trail. A nine year old was in the living room when shots were fired at the house and got grazed by a bullet. The child was treated on scene is expected to be OK. Police do not have any inform suspect information at this time, and this is an ongoing investigation. It's a problem we talk about a lot across our region. More than 50,000 seniors face food insecurity. They struggle to afford expenses beyond what they get in fixed income. But this year, the San Antonio Food Bank is stepping up, launching a new campaign to help out. So today, joining us in a leading SA segment is Eric Cooper, President and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank. Eric, we love having you on on our Sunday show. Hey, well, good morning, Sarah and Max. Uh, sorry, I've got some allergies, but earlier Dr. Max was giving me a prescription. He's that, a great uh, doctor. Ho yeah. Hopefully we'll remedy it. So, <laughs> Well, Eric, thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Now, tell us about Hunger Free November for Seniors. 
Well, you all know we feed about 105,000 people each week, and that makes up children, makes up families, and it makes up seniors. We set a goal because of the need being as high as it is, that if we could meet the need of a specific population, it would demonstrate our ability to make a secure community. So we focused on seniors and we're asking San Antonio to help us allow for a hunger-free November for seniors. It's basically this, if you give us the financial support, we'll be able to access the food that would adequately nourish a senior for 30 days. And so it's just $35 times that 50,000 seniors. If we can demonstrate this, I think we'll know exactly what it's gonna take so that we can continue it for months to come. And Eric, you know, we're coming out of a brutal summer for the community, also Hunger Action Month. So what is the current state of the food bank right now? Well, it, the need is high and we've been working as hard as we can to meet those needs. Now, with a hunger-free November for seniors, we wanna make sure everybody knows we're not abandoning all of the other work that we do. This is just additive. This is our goal to try to do just a little bit more to make sure that we can take care of all the seniors in our community. But it's been incredible. You all led the call for Hunger Action Month and we saw lots more volunteers. People were doing food drives. You know, it was just an incredible effort to make sure that people are aware of the issue and that they get involved. And so we're going to continue that challenge through the holidays is just encourage San Antonio to continue to come out and support the San Antonio Food Bank. Well, sticking on the, the status of the, the food bank, look, it, it's no news that we see, still see inflation year over year, month over month. And now we're seeing higher gas prices. How do you guys not only do what you do with those increased prices, but how do you manage to do that with you know, more and more families around our area seemingly spending more of their expenses on everyday things like gas and honestly groceries? Yeah, we all feel it, right? Uh, you know, the household budget uh, is limited and, you know, our paychecks just don't cover all of the expenses that come at us. And you mentioned several of them. I mean, rent is probably the largest expense and then utility bills, uh, transportation expenses, but the cost of everything has gone up. And so families substitute and so many families um, fall short and they're leaning on the food bank. We want viewers to know that we're here to help. So reach out to us. If, if you are a senior that's been struggling to maybe buy your medicine and get food, connect with us. We have a call center. Uh, the information will be provided. You could go to our website. Um, there's lots of different ways you could come to the food bank, but we want to make sure nobody goes hungry. And, you know, the holidays are going to bring some additional challenges. People are going to want to have a, a great Thanksgiving, but those expenses will keep a lot of those families um, feeling like it's just not going to be achievable. Speaking of the holidays, I can't believe we're halfway through October. You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas are upon us. So how is the food bank prepping for the holidays? I know it's a time when the community really wants to give back and they tend to be more generous when it comes to donations. Yeah, Sarah, thank you. It, you know, Thanksgiving, the, the most celebrated meal of the year, we've been working hard to procure turkeys and it was great to see a couple of semi truck loads of frozen turkeys start to already come in from our procurement team. And so we've got to raise thousands and thousands of turkeys to make sure that no one goes without. And we're committed to do that. So we're gonna be doing as much as we can, but San Antonio, you support us in allowing us to do that. A great way is to run the turkey trot. I know I'm gonna see Max out there running it. It's a 5K, it's on Thanksgiving morning. All of the proceeds uh, go to help support us at the food bank so we can make sure uh, all those meals happen. Our kitchens down at the at the shelter at Haven for Hope, that that kitchen run by the San Antonio Food Bank will be busy providing meals to the homeless. So lots of ways for San Antonio to continue the spirit of thankfulness and giving and serving. You just go to our website and, and figure out what day and time works best for you. 
All right, Eric Cooper, President and CEO, of San Antonio Food Bank. I guess I now have to run the turkey trot. So yeah. thank you for that. He's gonna have to be you there. Know, <laughs> the turkey legs, turkey trot. You know, it's all good. It's yeah. all good. All right, thank you, Eric. If anyone missed any of the interview, we're gonna have the whole thing posted. Just head to ksat.com throughout the morning time now. Eight ten. 62 degrees. I'm, it feels weird even saying 62 degrees. I'm glad degrees. you're the one running the turkey trot now. We can run together. Let's see if I we can, can be uh, a cheerleader. We How can about that? parlay this into some live shots out and about. Okay. Yeah, Challenge. hopefully our producers are listening. All <laughs> right. Okay. So coming up, how a local family is keeping their Halloween tradition going even after losing their son. Katrina Weber shares this story after the break. A quick live look out at the Alamo City. Look, we talk about the holidays just around the corner. Halloween, 16 days away, and it really does feel like mid-October, 62 degrees. What's it gonna look like for the rest of the day? What about the work week? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey, just a few moments. A couple behind a popular Halloween haunt in Holotus is struggling with real life tragedy. So they lost their son, their only son, in a motorcycle crash just a few weeks ago. Katrina Rubber shows us how, even through their own pain, they plan to keep bringing happiness to others. This is how you enter. You go in. Rick Romano has it all planned out. Every sound. Every sight. And this area here, this is the witch's area. Yeah. And every surprise. The Jack in the box will pop open. He jumps out. One thing he did not expect was doing all of this without his son by his side. 24-year-old Nicholas Romano, or as his family called him Nick, was killed in a motorcycle crash last month. Nick was one of the kindest people you would ever meet. He was so kind. He was the life of the party. He's such a positive person. He was always wanting to help people. For years, this Holotus family has been helping to thrill local children, turning the outside of their home on trailing Fern Street into a haunting Halloween experience. This was our annual contribution that we love to do. They'd spend all year planning. Then Nick would use his skills in construction science management to bring it all together. No! <laughs> this was his favorite time of year. He loved doing this. He loved the creation. We were supposed to start setting up the day after he died. For an instant, they considered canceling this year, but an outpouring of love from others, some of them strangers, changed their minds. Even on this rainy day, friends showed up with helping hands, touching hearts. It's a community that's helping us deal with this tragedy, and we wanted to continue. Still, while the tradition will go on, the changes will be hard to ignore. For years, this has been known as the failed experiment cemetery, but this year, Romano says he's changing the name in honor of his son. It's going to mount up on these trees here. So it'll say the Nick Romano Halloween adventure. It's just one way the family plans to keep his memory alive, while also giving others a chance to make some memories of their own. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Great story by Katrina. And Absolutely. look, we are about two weeks away from Halloween. Yeah. It's starting to feel like it, too. It really is, especially in the mornings, right? It feels nice yeah. and crisp. This morning, it feels great. Now, today, we've got some air moving in from the north. And take a look at temperatures across the nation. It is much cooler across the Rockies and to the north right now. Temperatures in 33 degrees, Dalhart, 38 in Denver, freezing in Bismarck. So we're going to get that wind coming in from the north here. Now, we're not going to get down into the 30s, but mornings will actually get down into the 40s at one point this week. We'll talk about that in a bit, but this is also bringing in some drier air too. But with those winds from the north, they are going to be pretty windy today. So it looks like we're going to see, be seeing wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour around San Antonio. That's the only hiccup in today's forecast. The wind could be a bit of a nuisance throughout the day today. We've got a lot of people visiting San Antonio and the hill country and areas across South Te South Texas because of the eclipse that happened yesterday. And what a treat for the weather today. 62 degrees outside, mostly cloudy right now, but we are seeing those clouds clear. A beautiful sunny image here behind me. North winds at about 10 miles, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it's already pretty breezy and it is nice and dry. Take a look at clouds and temperatures. So yes, we've got a few mid-level clouds out there, but it's 55 degrees in Rock Springs, Pleasanton 62, 63 increases Springs, 70 in Del Rio. 
Ohio, 58 in Beeville, 56 in Gonzales, and 59 in New Braunfels. Dry air in place, dew points in the 30s at the bottom of the scale here. Very dry outside, and uh, that is what's going to make it feel awesome out there, but it's also chapstick weather. You may need a little extra chapstick today because of the dry air in place. And as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, skies are already starting to clear. By noon, it's going to be 70 and mostly sunny. Notice those winds staying windy from the northeast all day long. And then in the afternoon, 77 degrees for the high. Later on tonight, temperatures are quickly going to fall. Winds will calm somewhat from the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour after sunset. And by 9 p.m., it's going to be in the low 60s. And by midnight, potentially in the 50s as well. So a cool evening on deck for us. And temperatures are going to be much cooler than the average of 83. It's going to be 78 in Hondo, 73 in Kerrville, 75 in Canyon Lake. It will be 83 in Del Rio, 80 in Eagle Pass, 81 in Catula, 79 in Beeville. Neighborhood views here, 73 in Holotus, Burning in Bulverde, 78 in Hondo, 78 in Bandera, 73 in Kerrville, and 78 in Floresville. So I mentioned the cool mornings with the dry air in place. Take a look at these morning lows. Tomorrow we're going to be at 50 degrees as the sun rises at a 7, a near to 7. And Tuesday, 49 degrees. Wednesday, 52. We could be in the 40s for the first time since April on Tuesday morning here in San Antonio. Morning lows rise by the end of the week, closer to the seasonable average there. All in all, a beautiful week for us. Temperatures, again, are going to be warming into the upper 80s by the weekend, but really nice in the next coming days. 50 degrees tomorrow morning, 77 for the high. It's that time of year where you need the light jacket in the morning and you shrug it off in the afternoon. So sweat away weather in the morning. Hey, by the way, here's a beautiful picture of the phases of the annular eclipse yesterday. This was just a little appetizer and a moose bouche mm. appetizer for uh, what's coming up. Well, coming up, I'm going to show you the path of the total eclipse, which will be happening in, happening in April as now we're counting down to the total eclipse that's going to be moving through uh, parts of San Antonio and the Hill Country. I want to get out to the hill country for that one. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be the best place to do it. But coming up, we'll show you that that uh, path. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. 820, 62 degrees. Boo Buckets and James Avery Charms. Both are making an appearance just in time for the holiday season. More about the two new and old items Ooh. after the break. All right, good morning. Welcome back. Good news with Halloween right around the corner. James Avery introducing a sweet charm just in time for the holiday season. The company partnering with Bluebell, a Texas favorite, to release to. the carton of vanilla ice cream charm. It is made out of sterling silver and bronze and complete with the iconic Bluebell cow and girl logo in the front. And on top of the charm is the Bluebell charm available for purchase at all James Avery locations can also be purchased online at jamesavery.com. Just in time for Halloween, McDonald's Boo Buckets. They're back. Nice. All right, so the spooky pails, they hold happy meals and they double as trick or treat containers. Actually, I think we've already seen a couple in the newsroom. Um, I think those are the ones from last year. Because okay. I know Steph went and got hers the day they came out. Gotcha. I went and got mine the day. <laughs> I, hey, I was there too. I got mine too. You have yet to bring in candy for the newsroom though. <sighs> it's because it's always supplied by Stephanie Cernan. Mm. <laughs> okay, the fast food giant has been offering the buckets sporadically since launching them in 1986. They are now available for purchase at McDonald's locations. My favorite thing about these boo mm. buckets, because I think it's nostalgic for me. That, but I remember like getting these as kids the fry smell never goes away. Oh, okay. Like it could be like five years later and you like smell the plastic. You're like, oh, McDonald's French fries. Uh, are McDonald's French fries your favorite French fries? Yes. Okay. They are. Yeah, please. They're not very good for you, but <laughs> they're my favorite. <laughs> Time now, 825, 62 degrees. Okay, before we head to the break, I want to wish a special oh. happy birthday from all of us here on GMOC. This is Tino Rodriguez. He is turning, guys, 103 oh, this Tuesday. He is watching right now. A message from his son, Eddie, says Tino is the eldest of six and is a World War II Army veteran. Oh, thank you for your service, Tino. And again, happy birthday from happy all of birthday. us. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, October 15th. Nice. I cannot believe we are halfway. We made it. Through October. I mean, look, 
We talked about it in July, right? <laughs> we were like, was, <laughs> we need to end the 107 degree days. Well, hey, look, it's 62 degrees to start the day. You know, I'm cold and I can't even complain we about it. We went through an eclipse. How was your eclipse day? It was good. I had the glasses. It was nice seeing everyone out on the street looking oh, yeah. up with their glasses. And Sarah had a gray line earlier. She said it was something really, you know, unified San Antonio. Absolutely. A lot of people were out and about. And I want to tell you that this is just a preview of what's to come. So if you were one of the unlucky ones that was stuck under cloud cover for all of the eclipse, there is another opportunity in April. Here's a look at a picture from the Ring of Fire eclipse yesterday from KSAT Connect. If you have pictures, please post them on KSAT Connect. We would love to share them. KSAT Connect is online or on the KSAT Weather Authority app. But again, just a preview. Coming up in April, on April 8th, we're going to have a total solar eclipse that's 176 days away or a little bit less than six months away. That this time the moon is going to completely or totally block out the sun and it will get dark along the path of totality. And that path of totality goes from Eagle Pass up through Dallas, Waco, up toward Texarkana, through the hill country areas like Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Rock Springs, Lakey. The blue line is where totality will last the longest up toward Bernie. Now it's going to be a little bit of a complicated thing around San Antonio because only those on the west side and on the the northwest side will be in the path of totality, but still areas like the Rim, Holotus, Stone Oak, Bulverde, Scenic Oaks, and SeaWorld all going to be in that path of totality. Now, we're excited for that. We're your Eclipse Authority Station. Today, though, is going to be a beautiful day, and the sun is going to be out. We're seeing some clouds out there right now, 65 at 10. But by noon, it's going to be mostly sunny and 77 for the high today. One hiccup, a little windy. Winds from the north at 15 to 20 gusting up to 30 miles per hour, but that's going to continue to bring in dry air, which is going to set up a beautiful week ahead with pretty cool mornings. Coming up, I'll show you that forecast in just a bit. Max, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Now to what we know about how Israeli forces are prepping for the expected assault and the challenges in ruined urban environments. So this is it's been more than a week since the Hamas terrorist attack where more than a thousand men, women and children were murdered. Oh, Israel's defense minister says the country's military will attack Gaza City, quote unquote, very soon. In fact, this morning, oh, we've already seen more action in the region. Missile sirens going off across central Israel and reports of Hezbollah, another terrorist organization, firing rockets towards Israel from the north. So tension is rising on both sides as Israel prepares for the next phase of this conflict. ABC's Brit Klenet is in Tel Aviv with the latest developments. This morning, Israel preparing for an imminent invasion of the Gaza Strip. The IDF saying plans are in place for an extensive attack by air, land and sea. We spent time with the IDF as they get ready for what they are saying will be a significant ground operation more than a week after that devastating Hamas attack on Israel. What are you expecting and how are you guys are preparing? Well, of course, we understand part of the reality of Hamas's strategy is to pummel communities within Israel with rocket fire. The soldiers here and the systems are absolutely prepared to provide the best defense possible uh, as Hamas keeps launching those rockets. And Israel telling us its defense system, the Iron Dome, is ready for its biggest test. The Iron Dome is one of the most important tools that Israel has in its arsenal. And with Israel at war, thousands of rockets being fired from Gaza, it's never had to work harder. IDF spokesperson Major Libby Weiss telling me the Iron Dome is intercepting more rockets than ever before, 6,000 in the last week. The IDF saying extra preparations include setting up new logistical bases, battalions are being equipped with additional weapons, and 360,000 reservists have been called up ahead of the land offensive. That was Brett Clinette reporting back here at home. A San Antonio man behind bars this morning after admitting to police that he killed someone. As we know right now, police were called to a west side neighborhood late Friday night on reports of a suspicious person looking through cars. Officers eventually found 35-year-old Bradley Dimmick, matching the description people gave when they called 911. While attempting to identify him, police say Dimmick just plainly admitted to killing a man and a dog inside a home on San Lucas Street earlier that night. Police went to that house on San Lucas, found a 65-year-old Keith Dimmick dead along with his dog. Investigators haven't clarified if the two are related or what exactly led up to the murder. But right now we can tell you Dimmick is facing two charges, murder and cruelty to an animal. 
A man is in jail this morning after being arrested for a deadly stabbing on the city's northwest side. Arrest records show 29 year old Cesar Guerra has been charged with murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This happened back on April 29th. Two men were stabbed during an assault involving Guerra. A motive has not been revealed, but San Antonio police say the victim described the man as, quote, enemies, end quote. Walking with a reason. The fight against fentanyl bringing people across Texas together to raise awareness over the weekend. The first Souls Walking for Souls Fentanyl Awareness Walk happened last night, and as our Avery Everett shows us, families and officials alike say the fight is far from over. There's hope in this tragedy, too. Turning pain into purpose. I don't want another parent to go through what I'm going through. I want them to know. I want them to be proactive. These families are fighting against fentanyl poisoning through the first Souls Walking for Souls Fentanyl Awareness Walk, held in the first official fentanyl poisoning awareness month. State leaders say this conversation is long overdue. It needs to happen. We, we can't just stop with October. The CDC reports that fentanyl kills more than 150 people each day across the United States. From walking to talking, organizers wanted education about fentanyl awareness to be a focus. Don't think like it can't happen to you. It can happen to you. Free Narcan paired with the feeling of community. Because I don't want anybody to go through what myself and my family has had to endure in losing, losing my son leading with the memories of their loved ones. We're our daughter's voice. She didn't die in vain. We're our daughter's voice. County and state officials all agree this conversation is far from over. We all know more must be done, and the state of Texas will stay engaged in this process every step of the way. Through solidarity and support. We're losing too many young people, and they're getting younger and younger. These families are committed to tackling the fentanyl crisis. As, as long as I'm alive, I'm talking about it. The DEA reports that fentanyl poisoning is actually the number one cause of death for Americans between 18 and 45. For more ways to start this conversation in your own home, head on over to KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Well, big news that was just announced this week. JCB, the world's largest privately owned construction, agricultural and industrial equipment manufacturing company. They are expanding here to San Antonio. And it's a huge deal. They're going to be sitting on 400 acres on the city south side. And get this, expect to have a $30 billion economic impact over the next 10 years. So joining us in today's second part of our Leading SA segment is Sarah Carabias Rush with Greater SATX. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so Sarah, break it down for us. How big of news is JCB? And what should the people of San Antonio know about it? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this news. Um, this is big news. Uh, this uh, JCB investment is going to bring with it uh, 1,500 new jobs uh, in San Antonio Southside, uh, making manufacturing equipment, uh, making industrial equipment and uh, agricultural equipment. And we just couldn't be more thrilled um, to be helping this UK-based company establish a second North American manufacturing facility. Oh, I know a lot of people making comparisons to Toyota, you know, when they put their manufacturing mm -hmm. here and all the jobs, the economic implication, how does it compare? Absolutely. Um, so this is actually the, uh, since the Toyota announcement, this is the next biggest announcement of a uh, single job creating investment within our, within our community. So it is quite similar. Um, it's also similar in that it will be creating a new ecosystem of companies that are coming to service JCB, right? Toyota has created around it a, a large campus with many companies that are uh, working to help produce those vehicles every single day. And JCB's uh, manufacturing facility will be just exactly the same with a similar impact. So the airport seeing a huge construction project and more flights, international flights to Germany, to Mexico. So what impacts could we see for those biz for businesses? Well, first of all, all businesses that are looking at making a location decision like JCB are thinking about how do we get to our customers? How do we get to our other operations around the world? And so investments in the airport are crucial. Uh, without them, we will not continue to win these big projects like uh, JCB's announcement. Um, so what we should expect to see out of uh, SAT is more flights uh, internationally and domestically that are ready to serve uh, the, the 
uh, residents here of San Antonio. Uh, we should see continued growth and opportunity for more airlines to be able to service this market through these enhancements at the airport. Um, and excited to see uh, what this airport will be in the next five years or so. So we're going to we're going to start big picture we're going to come back here to San Antonio. There's a lot of uncertainty when we talk about macroeconomics, interest rates, you know, some countries dealing with recessions of their own. When we look here locally, you know, what is Greater SATX's workforce outlook? Goodness, uh, the workforce outlook here in San Antonio couldn't be better. Um, we have a tremendous base uh, of people that are here that are ready to work, right? And so when we have the opportunity to talk with companies like a JCB about the opportunities for them to, to put down roots here, they are thinking almost entirely about, can we get the workforce? And we know here in San Antonio, we have the workforce to service these needs. Um, so if you're if you're thinking about what lines of work to go into, uh, maybe you wanna uh, think about your long-term future for your family, you're thinking about jobs that have benefits, manufacturing is a fantastic way to open up that career path and those opportunities for you. And if you look at our pipeline of companies that we're talking to today, manufacturing is leading the way. Uh, and so you will see lots and lots of job opportunities within the manufacturing sector here in San Antonio for years and years to come. But of course, not only that, uh, healthcare jobs, technology jobs are on the rise. Certainly cybersecurity is a critical element uh, for workforce here within this region and will continue to be really important for all kinds of businesses moving forward. So Sarah, one more thing before we let you go. We know communities mm -hmm. around San Antonio are growing. So what does business recruitment into places like New Braunfels and Bernie look like? Well, that I love that question. Um, we are a regional organization and we are always thinking about how do we make sure each and every community within the San Antonio region is able to um, have access to those opportunities that make sense for that community. Uh, when I have the opportunity to chat with elected leaders of communities like you know, Bernie or New Braunfels or, or whichever community within our eight county MSA, I often say, you know, you all are in the the position to decide what you want your community to be. And then we walk alongside you and help make sure that we're talking to the right kinds of companies that will supplement the community that you're looking to build. Um, and so we are out on the road day after day talking to companies and trying to get the good word out about the greater San Antonio region and have a lot in the pipeline with many announcements to come for our partner uh, communities outside of San Antonio as well. All right. What an exciting time for San Antonio. Sarah, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us this morning. And anyone who missed any of the interview or want to learn more about JCB and the big announcement, just head to ksat.com. Time now, just about 843, 62 degrees. Hey, let's go outside. It's 62 degrees, like Max just said. Oh, oh no. That's just us. We want it. There, there it we is. Oh, Y'all, you have your coffee on the porch. Step outside. It feels so good outside this morning. Sarah Spivey is going to let us know how good, how good, <laughs> how long <laughs> these temperatures will stick around for. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Sunday and couldn't be happier to see 62 degrees on the screen. Absolutely. Feels so good. Gorgeous outside. The sun is out. It's going to be a beautiful day, but a bit windy. Now, yesterday during the annular eclipse, a lot of people sent us in pictures of the shadows uh, that were cast because of the eclipse. And I, I'm going to write about this a little bit more in depth, but I want to talk about the reason why this happens. So on any given day, Shadows that are cast from the sun with the trees and things like that are, are usually circles. They're just fuzzy circles, circle like the sun. But on a day like yesterday, when the moon moves in front of the sun, that light gets focused even more. And what you see instead of a circle is two circles as what was uh, in the eclipse. So it's essentially a pinhole projector. Uh, so really fascinating. This picture sent in through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. Please send in more pictures. We would love to see them. The big story today, other than the beautiful weather, is that it's going to be pretty windy. We're going to see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour 
periodically throughout the day and into the afternoon. Those winds will calm down a little tonight, but it's still going to be pretty windy in the evening as well. So take a look at the weather setup across the state of Texas. It's pretty quiet. We have some clouds across western portion of our viewing area. I'll show that in just a bit. But the big picture is that we've got a, a few rain showers across the northeast and this high pressure system over the Rockies is firmly in place. Now, usually in the summer when we talk about that high, it's bad news, right? It gets hot, but this high is actually going to funnel in that Rocky Mountain air. And so cooler air is going to be working its way in from the north and drier air as well, working its way in from the north too. So a very pleasant day for us and in the uh, mornings, early morning hours, that's when we're really going to feel that cool air. So outside right now, 62 degrees, skies are starting to clear. Winds are already from the north at about 15 miles per hour. Temperatures 59 in New Braunfels, 57 in Bulverde. Notice that where the skies have been clear, like in Bernie, New Braunfels, temperatures are actually in the 50s. There's still a little cloud cover out near Uvalde right now this morning, but those will eventually clear. And in Hondo, it's mostly cloudy in 61. So looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast for San Antonio, skies have already started to clear around San Antonio 65 at 10 70 and windy at noon windy all afternoon. We'll be looking at a high right around 77 and then temperatures will quickly fall into the 60s after sunset tonight and it'll be a cool evening with low humidity. Take a look at forecast highs today around South Central Texas 83 in Del Rio 81 in Catula 79 in Pleasanton around the San Antonio area. We're going to be quite a bit cooler than average or average high is 83. It's instead going to be anywhere from five to 10 degrees cooler than that. 73 in Holotus and in Bernie as well as in Bulverde. 78 in Bandera, 78 in Hondo, 78 in Sabinal, 77 in New Braunfels and in Seguin. It'll be 77 in Converse, 79 in Pleasanton and 78 in Floresville. Humidity will stay pleasantly low for most of the week ahead, really only seeing humidity climb up by about Thursday. That's when dew points will be back in the muggy category in the 60s. But until then, it's going to feel a amazing outside and with the lower humidity, our morning lows are going to be honestly a little chilly, especially for our standards here in South Central Texas. 50 degrees tomorrow morning, 49 on Tuesday, potentially first time we've been in the 40s since April all the way back to Fiesta. And as we take a look at these high temperatures, 77 tomorrow, 78 on Tuesday, 82 on Wednesday, and then we'll be looking at a gradual warm up back to the upper 80s, low 90s for the weekend. So, you know, that is pretty warm. It's warmer than average, but it's not as bad as we had it this past summer, guys. <laughs> oh, Sarah, hey, 88 sounds nice and cool to me. Not too bad. Not too bad, not complaining. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 851, 62 degrees. We'll be right back. A lot of work is underway to make this year's Dia de los Muertos Fest just as beautiful as it was last year. There'll, there will be flowers, at least 80 altars from all over San Antonio, live performances, and local art vendors. So Muertos Fest, two days of remembrances and celebrations at Hemisphere Park. KSAC going to be there for both days, including our Sarah Costa. I'll be there, be doing some live reporting along with Steve Spreester and Stephanie Jimenez. Muertos Fest is Saturday, October 28th, and Sunday, the 29th. So if you can't make it out to the park, you can watch all the action right here on KSAT November 1st at 8 p.m. And for everything related to this year's Dia de los Muertos Fest and celebrations in and around San Antonio, take out the phone, go to the camera app, scan the QR code on the screen. We have dates, times, places, and celebrations. Just a friendly reminder that the pollen count is on a bit of a hiatus. It will return on Tuesday the 17th. As for our weather, absolutely gorgeous today. A little on the windy side with gusts up to 30 miles per hour, but temperatures steadily rising into the upper 70s this afternoon. 77 for the high in San Antonio. A cool morning tomorrow, 50 degrees. I don't know about you, but I need a jacket when it's 50 or even dropping into the 40s like it's going to be on Tuesday morning. But it's that time of the year where you in the morning as you're driving to work, you turn on the heater and in the afternoon you turn on the AC. Temperatures are going to be climbing to the upper 70s in the next couple days, upper 80s by the weekend. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. Y'all have a good Sunday.